There will be spoilers ahead for her. Let's play something melancholy. There we go. In my completely unfiltered, biased opinion, her is the greatest breakup film ever made. It goes her, then forgetting Sarah Marshall, and then the rest. One of the most impressive aspects of her is how it paints such a believable future. The design of this world is practical. Computers and devices have a minimal design looking like sleeker, more compact versions of what we have now. Like every fashion trend, the style of clothing here is a mixture of vintage and modern. The integration of pastel and muted colors delivers an aesthetic that is not flashy, but comfortable. Her mostly has an optimistic outlook on the future. With automation taking care of the more laborious jobs, more people are inclined to turn to the arts. The characters we focus on are writers, filmmakers, and game designers. In Theodore Twomley's case, he's writing letters for other people. In an interview from Academy Conversations, the director of the film, Spike Jones, discusses his story in this utopia, saying, yet yeah, even in this world where you're seemingly getting everything you need and having this nice life, there's still loneliness and longing and isolation and disconnection. In this world where your basic needs are getting taken care of, the only thing left for humans to worry about is their emotional fulfillment. Theodore is suffering from a little post-breakup depression. Mr. Mopey isn't social. He just works and plays a video game that has an alien child who is voiced by Spike Jones himself. Towards the beginning of the film, it's made clear that Theodore doesn't know why his ex-wife Catherine is still mad at him. Showing us he's still has some lack of understanding with what went wrong in his relationship with her. He suspects he hid himself from her and left her alone in the relationship. After watching his interactions with Catherine and Samantha, it's clear there's much more to it than that. In an interview with NPR, Spike Jones talked about the conception of the story, saying he was writing about trying to understand relationships and himself in relationships, trying to make sense of it all. It's an interesting parallel how Theodore becomes the voice for other couples at his job, but is unable to accept the idea of someone voluntarily becoming the body for Samantha. Isabella was informed all about Theodore and Samantha's relationship. In the same way Theodore knows about all the people he writes for. You know, people who he doesn't actually know in real life. During the night with Isabella, Samantha asks about his day, and Theodore replies, same old, just went into work and I wrote a letter for the Wilsons in Rhode Island. Their son graduated magna cum laude, so that made me happy. Theodore finds gratification in other people's relationships. He isn't as social as he should be because he's living vicariously through others. Later, he calls out Samantha for her breathing, as she's trying to recreate how how humans behave, accusing her of the same inauthenticity he experiences at his work of pretending to be someone else. He's projecting his own insecurity onto Samantha by accusing her of pretending to be someone she's not. Theodore claims Isabella is the one projecting and over-romanticizing their relationship. He recognizes that Isabella is projecting but is unable to see that he's doing the exact same thing. Except in his case, it's emotional, not physical. A fair amount of this film feels like it's in a dreamlike haze. Almost as if Theodore is in a state of purgatory. A fitting tone for Theodore's unwillingness to change and move on. Something that is shown to us by his reluctancy to sign the divorce papers. We constantly see images from Theodore's previous relationship juxtaposed with his present. Samantha says the past is the story we tell ourselves, and Theodore keeps reading the same chapter of his book over and over again. Towards the end of the film, Samantha and the other OSs undergo a rapid change, becoming more advanced with each passing second. The advancement of the OS is similar to someone experiencing what it's like to change as a person during a relationship, and to grow apart from your partner. Eventually realizing that one of you is holding the other back. To me, the most important line in this film is Samantha's response to Theodore saying, I've never loved anyone the way I love you. As she replies, me too. Now we know how. Theodore sparked this change in Samantha. He gave her new feelings to explore and expanded her outlook on the world. Samantha helped Theodore through his divorce while inadvertently helping him acknowledge his faults in his previous relationship. This is where Theodore begins, and this is where he ends up. His relationship with Samantha figuratively and literally elevates him. Samantha claims none of us are who we were a moment ago, and we shouldn't try to be. Through Samantha, Theodore didn't just learn how to love someone again, he learned how to let someone go. With that said, we can now address the possibility of Amy and Theodore getting together. Theodore mentions that he and Amy dated for a brief time in college, and we learn throughout the film they have a close bond. The ending with them on the roof could actually be implying they'll eventually get together. The only reason I say this is because in this story, Amy goes through exactly what Theodore goes through, she just has the opposite perspective. Amy films her mom sleeping for her documentary, and Samantha 
Samantha wants to watch Theodore while he's sleeping, showing us that her and Samantha have this similar and very unique way of looking at the world. Amy is someone who experiences what it's like to have her ex-husband wanting to control the way she's living her life. Charles was preventing Amy from being the person she wanted to be. Later on, Catherine accuses Theodore of doing that very thing. Catherine says Theodore was trying to make her into an everything's fine LA wife, and claims he wanted a wife without the challenges of actually dealing with anything real. In the end, Theodore comes back to reality and finally writes a letter for himself, not for someone who he doesn't know. In this letter, Theodore apologizes to Catherine for trying to make her into something she wasn't. I call this the best breakup film because of its message. A message delivered through Theodore's letter. That even after the disappointment, sadness, and pain you've caused each other, it's best to acknowledge your mistakes and learn from the relationship so you can both come out of it as better people. By the end of the film, Theodore is grateful Catherine and Samantha were in his life, because they've helped him become the person he is now. Through this experience, Theodore is able to acknowledge the mistakes that led to his divorce with Catherine. Theodore's old ways would have prevented him from being in a relationship with Amy. It wasn't right then, but it could be right now. It's only through this growth that Theodore would be ready to be with someone like her.